cloud-capped hills of Manas National Park, enveloped in early morning mist. The sound of surging water of Mana River, with its treacherous rapids, can be heard from a distance. Manas is located in western part of the state of Assam in India and it is known as Mana to the locals, christened after the river Mana that rushes down from the Bhutan hills on its eastern border. Manas covers an area of 519 square kilometers and it was declared a national park in 1928 and later it was also recognized as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1985. The male green peafowl displays typical courtship activity by fanning out its tail that appears to attract human beings just as it attracts female peahens. The erectile train of feathers is adorned with blue-green eyes which appear to look back. The peafowl vibrates its train of iridescent feathers into a colorful fan shape. Assam in the northeast of India has as many as five national parks and other wildlife sanctuaries. Manas bordering Bhutan was declared a tiger reserve in 1973. Manas is famous because it is home to a large number of globally threatened species such as the Asian elephant, Asiatic wild water buffalo, Indian one-horned rhinoceros, tiger, the gore, golden langur, and among the birds there is the critically endangered Bengal florican. Manas was inscribed as a World Heritage Site in the year 1985. However, in the year 1992, because of the disturbed situation, it was downlisted as a World Heritage Site in danger. Situation, however, is slightly improved and uh, is slowly improving. With its lush and variegated vegetation, Manas comprises of different types of forests, harboring and sustaining different faunal species. The forest type ranges from mixed deciduous semi-evergreen, eastern barbersal forest, to low alluvial savanna woodlands, and western alluvial grassland. Manas is home to the rare and critically endangered species of bird known as Bengal florican, of which only 400 survive in the world and about 50 of them are found in Manas National Park. Resident birds include college peasant. The great pied hornbill can be seen in its flight, pied harrier. It is also a home to about 500 different species of birds the lesser adjutant stork, hoopoe can be seen catching worms, changeable hawk eagle, grey-headed fishing eagle, black-headed oriole, spangled drongo, rose-ring parakeet emerges slowly from the cavity of a tree. White-throated frontal flycatcher looks for insects. Blue-throated barbet goes inside the tree cavity, carrying food for its young. Red-breasted falconet flies away to another branch. With its family cock-a-doodle call, red jungle fowl announces its arrival. Male and female birds show very strong sexual dimorphism. Different species of birds can be seen living in symbiotic harmony with other species. 
The return of peace and tranquility to Manus has enabled even a nocturnal animal like the slow loris, a very shy creature, to make a carefree daylight appearance. Darkness descends at Manus. A tiger walks lazily into the thick jungle. It is then the time of predators. A night jar waits patiently for its next prey and other predators like rare brown hog owl venture out. These nocturnal birds appear to be asleep, but they are actually waiting for their potential prey. A rare allied night jar teaches two of its young how to hunt prey. But with daybreak, fear evaporates and peace and calm of the jungle returns. They know that they are safe now. A somber is busy foraging. Elephants are found in a herd of about five to ten. They often move from one place to the other in search of food, and such herd also includes baby elephants learning ways of survival. Wild boar forage from dusk to dawn, and they eat anything from roots, tubers to carrion. A prickly porcupine takes cover and vanishes into the bush. Safe from the most dangerous predator, man, the elephant enjoys an undisturbed breakfast, unmindful of predators. The mighty elephant can look very gentle. Similarly, black swallowtail butterflies exist in undisturbed symbiotic harmony with green butterflies. 50% of butterflies in India are found in Assam, mostly in Manas and Namiri. Swallowtail butterflies are found at lower elevation in semi-disturbed land in Manas. This World Heritage Site was in danger, but now the richness and beauty of nature is gradually returning and it is our duty to preserve it. Wanton illegal logging has taken an immense toll on the forest in Manus and its resources. Trees are cut down by timber smugglers and log rafts are transported down the river to illegal sawmills. Sometimes logs are seized by forest rangers, but still the menace of illegal logging has not been stopped. Such illegal felling leads to deforestation which will have serious consequence on the ecology. Local residents have now begun to realize that having a forest cover shall be actually beneficial to them. The defense system earlier was very magnificent prior to the disturbed conditions in starting around 1989 owing to the borderland agitation. The miscreants took immense unpardonable liberties in wiping off the rhino population almost. However, these days we have a phenomenon that's called change of heart. Most of the poachers which, who were the helmsmen of the commercial exploiters of our flora and fauna have surrendered to our authority. And personally, I was responsible for turning about 60 of them in the eastern side of the National Park and formed together Manas Mausigendri Ecotourism Society. Now, I'm glad to tell you that out of about 60, 48 are very active now to patrol my area along with our own staff. And they have formed a registered society which has become a service provider to us. Many transformed poachers now act as Green Army of Manas protecting flora and fauna 
and warding off poachers. They now actively patrol the jungle with their homemade guns in close cooperation with the forest staff. Nearly 150 poachers surrendered to the authority with their gazimaras or the guns used for poaching to take up forest conservation and tourism promotion. Peace returned after an agreement was signed for the creation of Bodoland on February 10th, 2003. Their transformation is helping Manas recapturing its past glory. A tiger siesta is broken by the sound of chirping of a cicada. It wakes up from its slumber. A pair of hog deer is alarmed. The tiger makes a dash for the kill as the Kaplanger looks on from the branch of a tree. An Indian bison becomes aware that danger is lurking around and then moves to a safer place. The male cicada continues to chirp shrilly, oblivious of tiger's presence. An Asiatic water buffalo smells danger in the air and tries to hide in the tall grass. The tiger soon makes the kill and gorges itself on the soft intestines and entrails of the kill. Here the fishes nibble the flesh of the dead tiger kill. Manus has some 52 recorded varieties of sub-Himalayan species of fish and it is famous for its golden mashir, which are seen once in a while. It's monsoon and torrential rain pour down the parched earth and gives a fresh lease of life to the forest by nurturing the thick vegetation. The rain ushers in a new life cycle with new vigor and spirit. Monsoon rain regenerates the forest, plants start growing, stream begins to swell. The rain brings life-sustaining water to the forest. A Malayan box turtle idles its way through. It is time for all animal species to procreate and breed. We captured a rare sight of a Burmese python laying eggs and giving birth to its young in the hollow of a trunk of a fallen tree. The snake coils herself around the eggs, keeping them warm and helping them to hatch by squeezing her body. When the eggs were ready to hatch, the young snakes poked their way out of the soft and leathery egg shells. Once eggs were hatched, the python's parental duty was over and conservationists carefully released the newborn into a safe place. They will start their unpredictable journey into the world and many of them will complete their life cycle. Manas National Park is contiguous with the Royal Manas National Park in Bhutan and has ideal ecosystem to harbor and sustain its floral and faunal richness. It is the only park in India with five different conservation status. It was declared a tiger reserve in 1973, a World Heritage Site in 1985, a Biosphere Reserve in 1989, a National Park in 1990, and an Elephant Reserve in 2003. This poacher had surrendered to the authority and now he patrols the forest with forest guards. The poachers have intimate knowledge of the landscape and terrains of the forest and their vigilance can further the process of life in the forest. Some local bodos also patrol the park round the clock for a daily wage of rupees 50, which is a pittance. The guards have seized over 40 guns. They have also started grassland management, ensuring return of herbivores and carnivores alike, and built 40 kilometers of road 
which will help tourists to arrive. At the height of unrest and disturbance, three chokis of the forest department had been raised to the ground, and 11 of their men had been killed. With concerted efforts by the forest department and the local Bodo community, and return of peace following formation of Bodoland in 2003, many poachers had been brought back to the mainstream now. They patrolled the jungle effectively. Manas is the single most ideal habitat of the endangered golden langur. The langur, being arboreal, lives in the trees almost throughout its life. They may be frolicsome, but they have an organized social life. They are thriving, and their numbers are on the rise. The golden langur is endemic to Manas National Park and its surrounding forest. However, the population of golden langur is estimated to be 5,000 only in the entire world, which is quite alarming. The last rhino in Manas was said to have been poached in 2003 in Kaklabari. It was then felt necessary to translocate rhinos to Manas. Such efforts were made by the Indian Rhino Vision 2020, assisted by different national and international agencies like the US Fish and Wildlife Service, the International Rhino Foundation, the World Wildlife Fund, and host of others. The translocation team goes into overdrive, making hectic preparation to transport the rhino to its destination. At first, a female rhino was translocated to Manus National Park in 2006. Two more females from Kaziranga joined her in 2007. Thereafter, two more males from Babitora Wildlife Sanctuary were translocated to Manus National Park in April 2008. You see, um, this was a female calf. It was rescued from flood water on 28th of July of 2002. At that time, it was about one month old. So now it has grown quite big. It has to be released to the wild. And uh, but anyhow, any rescued animal after treatment and after keeping it here for such a long time, it cannot be released straightway to the wild conditions. It has to be there. Has to be pre-released condition. Uh, means it, it's uh, everything is looked after, its proper protection and security, then food, everything is seen. So that is why we had to release it somewhere, either in Kaziranga or in Manas. So what we thought that uh, because Manas was also having rhino earlier, so why not to release it in Manas? So a committee studied the habitat of Manas and we ultimately found out one place known as Kuriville in uh, Manas uh, Park itself, within the Manas Park. So there, this was quite suitable for the rhino. So that a, one area has been fenced and closed and enclo with an enclosure. So now this will be released there. Uh, it is a pre-release sort of thing. So there, every aspect will be looked into and uh, any problem it will be facing, we will see to it. Once the truck carrying the rhino reaches the destination, there is excitement in the air. The truck carrying the rhino is carefully maneuvered backwards down the slope, which was dug to enable the rhino to move out of the wooden crate. The rhino makes a full charge and bangs its head into the truck while the team looks on with curiosity. As the rhino rushes into the wild, the translocation team breaks into applause. Return of rhinos has brought the last glory back to Manus National Park and cheer among the locals. Rhinos were there in Manas, then uh, uh, Laukwa, Burasapuri, even Dibrusoikwa. So what we have done that we want to translocate uh, uh, to our wild rhinos to those or original places also. At the time of uh, shifting some rhinos under that uh, uh, rhino translocation program. And most probably because this uh, female calf is from Kaziranga origin, so uh, we'll have to give a male rhino from Povitra. 
uh, matching its age. On the prospect of its success, he said, There is no reason why it will not be successful. After relocation, rhinos were kept in an enclosure, measuring 33 acre called Boma, to protect them from predators, while they underwent gradual acclimatization to the new environment. As there are plans to relocate more rhinos, soon they will find mates, and rhino population is expected to grow as they did before. Perhaps it will be another success story, like the Kaziranga National Park. Kaziranga had about only 12 rhinos a century ago. Today it boasts of rhino population close to 2,000. There is a growing awareness among the people now, and once Manus regains its lost glory, it will bring cheer to the wildlife enthusiasts as well as to the casual visitor. There is an invisible relation of nature and man. And in our Rig Veda, there is a beautiful sloka. And it is said that, uh, work for the glory of your con country and countrymen, speaking different languages, give due respect to the faith and aspiration of people. Countless are the reservoir of the Mother Earth, through which flows the river of wealth in thousand streams. Worship your land as you worship God. From time unknown, the Mother Earth is giving life to her children. I personally feel, also feel that uh, without uh, nature, a human being cannot develop their, uh, I mean, uh, spiritual power. A spiritual power should be there uh, to build up a very beautiful world. And once Radha Krishnan said, to the to students that if you become scientifically skilled and do not develop develop the other dimension of your soul and do not believe that besides knowledge there are other words like wisdom you will become a monster not the master of your life a traditional bodo ceremony is in progress on the outer brink of manas a Bengal florican chick hatched by a domestic hen from an egg found in the wild is about to be released. The local Bodo tribe, ceremoniously released it into the wild by performing traditional rites and rituals. Conservation and symbiosis are part of the folk life of the people now. Such participation of the community will go a long way not only in bringing Manus back to its own glory, but in the sustainable growth of such other sites. And such process will help other such endangered species like this Bengal florican chick to thrive in the wild again. As the chick is released, it rushes out in the open to be part of nature as it was meant to be. It will soon walk into adulthood and roam free in resurgent manners.